As they passed through the gauntlet of shelves and shelves of cheese, bacon, eggs and piles of bread made fresh from the sweet smelling wheat, grand and golden, enough to feed 5,000, hollow bread, bread to comfort the heart of man, bread from the earth, bread from God, on sale by the bakers. Johnny suddenly saw his mother step to the left and hurry on as a drunken man came staggering along the path. The man lurched in towards the shop, knocked against a tray of pig's feet and sent them flying all over the place. Good God, man, what are you after doing? shouted the shop boy as he rushed over to gather them up, a crowd gathering to laugh at what had happened. Like lightning, Johnny slid a lump of bacon into the folds of his kit bag and snatched up an egg as he passed by running like hell to catch up with his mother, who was a little ahead. Catching his mother's arms, he cried that he was cold and ran her trotting along till they turned down into the dark and gloomy King's Inn Street and he was safe and thrilled but trembling. Through Liffey Street they went, a street of old furniture shops, all shuttered close now. The street deserted, safe for an old straggler trudging over the straw and sodden paper that littered path and road. Up the quay along Essex Bridge, both of them bending to battle the breeze that swept up the Liffey, down Capel Street, into Dame Street, and at last into the warm, brightly lighted, busy big shop of Lipton's. Johnny paused for a moment to look at himself in the huge mirrors panelling the walls just inside the great door, showing him and his mother as lean, skinny-looking gazebos entering the shop. They'll show us up fat as fools going out, said his mother laughing. The shop was crowded full of white-coated counter-jumpers, handing out tea and sugar and margarine, as swift as hands could lay hold on them, with men in brown overalls, trotting along, pushing mounts of the tea and sugar into packages onto little trolleys, moving silently and cunningly through the crowded shop to fill up the vacancies on the shelves. They waited their turn to get their seven pounds of sugar, a pound of tea for one and six, and a two-pound pot of Lipton special plum and apple jam. Johnny packing them into the kit bag while his mother slowly and feelingly put back sixpence change into the pocket of her skirt, strengthened with added lining to keep such treasures safe. Well, that'll have to provide us with whatever we may need for the rest of the week, she murmured, letting the sixpence go at last when she felt it settle into the bottom of the pocket. Johnny swung the kit bag over his shoulder and he and his man manoeuvred through the door through the people thronging the shop, pausing to see themselves in the mirrors, looking like fat pigs, bulging cheeks, great round bellies and enormous bodies showing how great the stuff was that Lipton sold. Then the pair of them plunged once more into the dark night, the spitting rain and the biting breeze. Johnny feeling all these trials less when he remembered the egg in his pocket and the bacon in his bag. When they got home again, Johnny spilled the sugar, tea and jam out onto the table. Then he put the lump of bacon and the egg right where his mother would see them when she turned around after taking off her wet things. When she turned, she stared. How in the name of God did those things ever creep into the kit bag? She asked. I fecked them, said Johnny gleefully. When the drunken man fell and scattered things, I fecked them as I passed. A nice thing if you'd have been caught fecking them, she said in a frightened voice. Never, never do the like again. Do you know, had you been nabbed, it would have meant five years or more in a reformatory for you. Never do it again, Johnny. Remember what you've been taught. Take no thought of your own life. What you shall eat, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on. For the life is more than meat, and the body more than raiment. And your heavenly Father know it, that you have need of all these things. So keep your hands from picking and stealing for the future. And she carefully placed the bacon and egg in the press. Johnny sat silently by the fire, drying his damn trousers. After a few minutes, he saw his mother putting on her bonnet and cape. Where are you going, ma? he asked. I'm going out to get a couple of nice heads of cabbage with the sixpence I've left to go with the bacon tomorrow, she said.